Today we are going to be playing around with displacement some more. Today we are going to be creating another abstract art using some displacement and some map nodes. So let's get into it. I'm gonna start off by taking a simple plane and let's scale this up and bring this up. And let's add some subdivisions here. Again, you can use a procedural method of subdivision using the catacloud or linear, uh, which we'll get into later on in the annul right here. But I'm just gonna keep a high amount of subdivision just because it's an abstract art, uh, the amount of subdivision is not really my concern. And uh, let's quickly get into assign new material, stand surface. Let's call this yes. Let's keep it like that for now. Uh, one more thing I want to do is uh, let's quickly let's get into the lighting data. All right, so I'm going to go to the hyper shade and uh, let's go into the apps and let's maybe first go with the ramp. All right, so the first thing that we are going to be taking is a ramp node, and we have already seen what ramp does. It's basically using uh, creates a multiple color. It's a gradient node and uh, here you can change the uh, Interpolation everything what type of diagonal or what type of gradient you want uh, in which direction I'm gonna keep it to circular because this will work as our mask uh, And I'm just gonna invert this quickly All right. And let's keep it to something like this. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is we need something um, to elevate or you can say create mountains. So what we are going to be doing is we are going to be taking a noise. You can also take Arnold's noise or if you want you can also take Maya's uh, volume noise or simplex noise. There are a lot of different noises. If you go for volume noise there's one thing that's good about it that is noise type. And here you will see a lot of different noises and uh, let me just yeah, there you go. So if you take volume wave, you can play around with this. I think there was uh, pretty nice ones as well. Uh, different one. What you can else do is you can go to Arnold and you can take a cell noise. And here you'll find, so here you'll find Voli, Voli 2. And this will work as a good noise as well. If you want, you can play around with it. So let's uh, play around with cell noise this time for a change. And I'm going to increase the amplitude to maybe like 4. Let's keep it to one. Let's add a color correct node to go along with it. And I'm going to increase the octaves to maybe like, let's keep it to one. And uh, the amount of density, how dense you want it to be. I'm going to keep it to one. I don't see much change here. And let's take a color correct node here. And attach the color here to the input. And let's try to play around with it. Now here, as you can see, I'm changing the values, but I still don't see anything. And uh, that is a simple bug with uh, Maya's refreshing, IPR refreshing. So just uh, just hit a refresh, pause and start. And then if you change, you'll see the changes. All right, there you go. So let's increase some contrast. Let's make the gamma to 0 0.30, 300. And let's increase the exposure a bit maybe like 1.5 I think this is looking quite good and from here once you're done with this what we can do is we can go here to the Arnold and we can take a simple multiply node which we have already seen how we can use um, math node to create pretty amazing displacement how we can merge to displacement so if you want you can go check that video out if you don't have any idea about the math node uh, so I'm going to take the AI multiply let's attach this attach this and let's uh, Close this down and attach this to the displacement. All right, so there you go. So now uh, this is what you have, this kind of displacement. So our ramp node is basically acting as our mass. The whole circle is acting as us. So anything that is beyond the white region uh, won't be visible. So I'm going to close this and let's see how this looks. I'm going to quickly take. Um, Let's take an area light and uh, let's maybe put it somewhere here. And let's turn on the IPR. And uh, for the area light, let's increase some samples just so we can see. All right, so this is looking quite good. Uh, there's one issue, and that is the noise of our um, Woolly noise, which is kind of too big. So, what we are going to do is select our plane go to displacement here 
uh, multiply and here you will find uh, the color correct and inside the cell noise and this or you can also access it from the hypersheet you can simply select it and you will be good to go alright so once you are in the noise you will see the scale here and if you go for a value of 2 and let me just turn this on you'll see that you have much bigger noise but if you go for something like maybe like 0 0.4 0 0.4 sorry 0 0.4 0 0.4 uh, now the first thing that we should turn down is let me just make this 111 again and let's control our displacement height first which is kind of too big right now I'm gonna go in Arnold displacement let's make it 0.4 maybe right so this is looking quite good and uh, again I'm gonna go to my displacement here and uh, there you go let's make this somewhere about 5 5 and 5 um, it's looking quite good let's go maybe like something like 6 6 and 6 again the displacement height is a bit too much so I'm gonna pause this quickly let's go to the shape height maybe like 0.1 alright so that is a reasonable amount Alright, this looks quite good. Now one thing the area, the region that uh, the mask has been applied is too big. So I'm going to control that as well by going to my abs again. And uh, by abs I meant abstract. And uh, we're displacement, ramp and let's go. Update the full scene. Well, let's keep it to that and uh, let's quickly take a simple camera switch this to the camera view and I'm gonna quickly turn this on and I'm gonna set a view or something like this let's turn on the IPR Alright, so I think this is looking quite good now. So I'm going to select this and uh, I'm going to just change just a little bit of the whole scaling again. And uh, the overall noise control and one more thing I want to do is quickly make the noise even smaller. Maybe like 12. 14. Now this is totally up to you. There is like no right or wrong uh, thing about this. No right or wrong value about this. This is just a creative process. Okay, so once you're done with this, um, let's quickly lock our camera, get out of the camera and let's delete our area light. Let's go to rendering. Let's take a directional light. Pause this, bring this up, scale this and rotate this. Alright, so this is looking quite good. If you want, you can decrease the intensity amount. I'm going to keep it to default for now. And uh, let's go close this. Go to the hypershade. And uh, let's bring this out. And let's take a simple RAM. Now, instead of taking Arnold RAM, I'm going to take this RAM, which is a native RAM. Uh, because we can get our noise UV as well. So I'm gonna attach this color to the base color and instead of all, let's take a shader ball and in the ramp I'm gonna choose a different color and let's take something like this let's add more markers. just click on this white rectangle to add more markers and instead of V ramp let's take maybe U and uh, turn this on and let's maybe take something like this okay so uh, we are not seeing much of a color here let me just bring this down 
and quickly go to the other let's turn this on and there you go here you start to see we have something like this now this is not exactly looking that interesting so what you're gonna do is let's go here let's add more color and let's maybe take something like red okay so I'm gonna just try to make these color a little pastel color because they're not exactly looking that good so I'm gonna quickly just change this to something like this yeah so there we go and instead of green just uh, let's take something like this okay so once you have done uh, this you can pretty much change the overall direction whatever you want you can keep it to diagonal um, radio circular whatever suits your preference so I'm gonna keep it to maybe like a u-ramp that looks good and with this uh, what you can do is you can increase the noise amount here you start to see that noise and you can maybe change uh, the wave of how you want it we won't work because we are working with u ramps and you can play around with this to create a kind of a neon -y look and we change the frequency of the noise totally up to you so there's a lot of different ways that you can play around with this so I'm gonna keep it to something like this and uh, yeah so now the finishing part what we are gonna do is add more subdivision to this so I'm gonna quickly go here subdivision and linear and let's add a three iteration linear and now you'll see that we get nice spiky mountains going on here if you don't like this color again you can try something else maybe a flat color but I thought we should try something different or if you want you can also use this color to plug into the emission color to get something weird out of it emission and uh, let's make the emission weight to one and let's disconnect the base color all right so let's see uh, there you go so again as I said this is something weird if you want you can go for it totally up to you and if you don't like it again uh, you can keep a simple black color with a little bit of metalness and five I'm going to turn off the emission let's uh, break the connection of this yeah. yeah and this looks pretty good as well just Add some more roughness into here. Let's take some code. Let's make value of 0.3. And again, if you are adding the metalness, you can increase the metalness amount and maybe add some of the thin film to get this kind of look as well. So again, totally up to you what kind of look you're going for. And if you want to do some more lighting in this, uh, I've, I'm just using a directional light. But with the directional light, what you can do is you can take a simple area light and let's hit J, rotate this. 90 degrees bring this out scale this up and turn this on let's maybe take an exposure of 6 or maybe an 8 let's increase the samples let's add more to the diffuse and specular samples and there you go so now you have something like this you can get rid of the directional light if you want maybe like you can control D this and uh, let's um, simply change the value from negative to positive and what is positive what you can do is uh, only the rotation and the translate and there you go so you have two opposite lights with the same distance so with this you can act it as a key light so you can add more highlights here and there you go and I'm just gonna change a little bit of my camera view not too much All right, so there you go. I'm gonna lock it, and if you want to add some more into it, uh, just final tweaking and anything, you can add some atmospheric volume. With this, which will be atmosphere volume, and let's make the density 0.1. Samples maybe like 12, and let's turn this on. You'll see something like this burning kind of thing, which is completely fine because we have a lot of exposure for volume. Let's make it eight. Reduce this to maybe 4 and again select this and make it 6 maybe. Right? So you can keep the volume for this like let's make it 6 and uh, we can keep the volume for this but for the key light we can turn off the volume. 
All right, so this will just act as our uh, key light and we don't get any volume. So for this one, you can maybe add a temperature and take maybe a cooler look for this. So there you go. This is how you can create an amazing abstract looking art with simple math node displacement and that's it. So have fun with this, add more displacement nodes here, maybe change more subdivision values and just try to create something out of it. Alright, that's it for this one and I'll see you in the next video.